Brilliant. So my research looks at the experience of female porn stars working in the American porn industry, but also how feminists talk about those experiences and how we talk about the different relations of power, sex and knowledge all combined to that. So to give you an example, I'm just going to show you some hardcore porn. <laughs> So there's a lot of feelings in the room. Some people are very relieved that I didn't show anything up there. Some people are very disappointed. Um, I'm not making eye contact to anyone in particular. Um, but that just goes to show that we have a lot of feelings when it comes to porn already. Before we even see it, we already have thoughts, feelings, biases, assumptions when it comes to what we're actually going to see. So that really bleeds into feminist theory, academic theory. It bleeds into how academic research is done as well. Um, so which is really problematic for trying to find the real voice of the performer in amongst all that bias as well. Um, and it contributes to stigma and it contributes to how do we tell other people's stories, especially in such um, a highly heated and very kind of controversial topic as well. So when you become the porn person in college, you learn all about that kind of aspect of things um, as well. So a lot of porn research suffers from the issue of bias. So I'm not claiming that we should get rid of bias. I'm claiming that we should be transparent about our biases. So we need to engage in reflexivity in our research as well. And that goes for all subjects, not just with so-called vulnerable people as well. Um, and we need to be really cognizant of the fact that in porn studies, a lot of ideology is substituted for methodology quite a lot as well. So again, that leads to the issue of stigma. So my interviewees told me they experience quite a lot of stigma when it comes to how they're perceived in the general society and what they think feminists think of them as well. So that can come down to um, that they were abused as children or they were drug addicts or they were deviant um, or some sort of criminal kind of behavior. So stigma, when it comes to porn, is sticky. And in porn, it's very sticky because we have semen and STIs in porn, so it makes it extra sticky. Um, so that has a real life consequence, again, for the participants as well, to try and shake off that stigma if they want to leave the industry and go on to different jobs and different avenues as well. But we have to be very careful then, as researchers, how we are talking about the performers to try not to contribute to the harm and to contribute to that stigma as well. So that stigma has the effect as well of delegitimizing the performers as well. So when they're talking about their experience, they have an extra battle to try and get their voice heard, to get their perspective be believed as like true, as opposed to say the feminist academic who is anti-porn as well. So they have their position and they have their knowledge. So it's a battle for whose knowledge is the correct form of knowledge um, when it comes to this debate. So we can see an example of this in this quote as well. So victims of the sex industry have become sex experts. So here we have a really interesting battle for power and control of the discourse as well. So we have someone who has lived experience who is denied the position of being an expert and they are relegated to the status of victim by someone who is an outsider to the debate as well. So real issues of power and control and whose experience counts more, whose knowledge counts and who's perceived to have the real knowledge as well. Um, and again, that contributes to the stigma as well, because the, the performer then is someone who is not to be believed, and they are someone who is a victim. So you have issues of power, but also issues of consent as well. So that person didn't necessarily consent to that victim status as well, and would prefer to identify as an expert status as well. So the battle for being an expert is very, very heated um, when it comes to porn studies. Um, and you have a lot of people who use titles such as doctor, or they will be a politician, or a, a TD, or a doctor, or like a medical doctor as opposed to an academic doctor. Um, and the, all those experiences are deemed to be more legitimate than a performer's own words themselves. So that's really problematic. And then again, it's a form of violence as well. So another form of violence is the debate is positioning yourself as the voice of the voiceless. So if you're speaking for your performer or you're speaking for your participant, that's a real problem because you're prioritizing your voice over their lived experience as well. So when we're telling people stories, we need to be cautious of not contributing to harm with our research as well. <coughs> and then just in conclusion then as well, 
if we allow for a calm conversation around porn studies, because we see in the media all the time screaming headlines about what porn is and what, what it isn't. So if we take an approach that stays away from those generalizations of all porn is X, all porn performers are X, whatever that happens to be. We stay away from this narrative of searching for one singular truth, because this positions the person as being the true knowledge keeper of the truth about porn or of the truth about the performer's life. Whereas if we take a more postmodern approach that allows for different um, analysis, different experiences, we get a more ethical approach that allows for different races, different classes, different genders to be heard in this debate, because we have problems of who speaks and who's allowed to speak. And that is pretty much me. So basically, when it comes to watching porn in your own homes, because um, I know you do, um, just be ethical about it. Kind of confront the stereotypes that you're carrying when you watch when you watch whatever you're watching, and see how that comes forth when you're looking at academic research on it as well. So critical thinking, both in your personal lives and in your professional academic lives as well. Thank you.